Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills number 5, Turning. This is a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. If you like my content, please do subscribe on Patreon where I post exclusive project videos. Okay, let's dive in. Turning is reducing the diameter of stock in the lathe. Now the first question is why do we do that? Well, first and foremost, obviously, because the stock is too big. We need a, you know, a part that's smaller than that. You know, stock comes in standard sizes. It comes in, you know, quarter inch, half inch, or, you know, three centimeter, five centimeter, whatever. Even if the shaft you're making, let's say, is exactly a quarter of an inch, uh, you can't use quarter inch stock because from the mill, it, uh, it might look pretty straight and pretty round, but it's, it's not. It's going to be, you know, maybe 10 thou out of round, and it's going to have a, a lousy surface finish on it, and uh, it might have a bend in it somewhere. So you have to buy stock that's larger and then turn it down to the proper diameter. The second reason that we turn is to achieve a nice surface finish. And that's not just for looks, although machinists are very passionate about making things pretty. Uh, you know, any stock that you buy is going to have some kind of undesirable finish on it. You know, this is hot rolled steel, which has mill scale on it. This is a byproduct of the hot rolling process. So you don't want that on any part of your machine. And uh, even cold rolled material, such as this, has this kind of uh, corrosion inhibitor on it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to it's not going to work if you have to press this shaft into a bearing or you know, use it in some other precision application. The third reason that we turn is to achieve concentricity in our part. You know, you can spin this in the three-jaw chuck and uh, it looks like it's centered and it looks like everything's round, but if you put an indicator on this, you'll see that, you know, there's, that this isn't actually concentric. Uh, even the best chucks have a little bit of runout in them, uh, so what we have to do is uh, get down below the runout in our system. And uh, that's a bit of a hard concept to explain, but it's a very easy concept to visualize. So let me show you what that looks like. Here's a piece of stock that I've chucked up uh, with exaggerated runout so you can see what that looks like. So uh, you can see that part is, is really far off center. Now, watch what happens when I turn down that part a ways. This is really the magic of the lathe. You can see that even though that part was incredibly out off center when we started, uh, just by turning it down enough, this section here is now spinning perfectly true. You can see where the original center was here on the face. You can see it wobbling all over there, but this surface right here is perfectly true, even though nothing else in this chuck system is. And uh, you know that's that's what lathes are all about. No matter how much runout you have in your chuck or your, your bearings or any other part of this system, if you turn it down enough, there's always a pure, true, concentric center in the middle of it all. So concentricity can be achieved by turning down the surface. Now, before you put the tool to the material, you need to understand backlash. Every machine has backlash, doesn't matter how high quality it is, uh, it's just a property of mechanical systems. So uh, this is what that looks like. See, I'm, I'm showing it in the carriage here because it's the most exaggerated in, in larger gearing systems. And you can see how much movement there is here. And I'm turning this wheel back and forth, you know, 30, 40 thousandths, but the carriage isn't moving. That's backlash. Now if I move back a little bit and then come in, so now I've taken up that backlash. Now, if I move 30 thousandths, the carriage moves 30 thousandths with it. So whenever you're making a cut on any hand wheel, you always have to make sure that you're coming at it from past where you need to be so that you've taken up that backlash. So I, I wind out and then I come back, I've taken up the backlash, and now from this point on, I can trust that reading on the dial. And you also need to know what kind of cross slide hand wheel you have. These come in two types, direct read and indirect read. So of course there's markings on here, in this case each tick is two thousandths, uh, but what is that actually telling you? In a direct read hand wheel, it's telling you the reduction in diameter of the part. So if I turn this in two thousandths, the part is going to be reduced in diameter by two thousandths. In an indirect hand wheel, this is telling you the depth of cut on one side. So in this case, if it's two thousandths, that means I'm cutting in two thousandths, but the part is spinning, so that same two thousandths is getting removed from the far side. So my reduction in diameter is double that, four thousandths. So to be absolutely certain which you have, you should just take some cuts on the machine and measure after each pass and uh, determine from there what type of hand wheel you have. Okay, let's actually make some chips. Now with any machining operation, uh, we don't know where that surface is yet, so we have to find it. The, the numbers on the hand wheels give you relative coordinates, but we don't know where zero is. So we've got to find our surface first, and we do that by touching off. So we've taken up our backlash, and now we're coming in nice and slow, 
And so we just touch off on that surface. There we go. Now we can come out here. Now I can set my hand wheel to zero and then I can dial in, let's say 20 thousandths. And our goal here is just to clean up the surface. And I recommend feeding by hand uh, when you're first learning just to get the feel of it. And the goal, like I showed with the concentricity demo, is to get inside any run out. Okay, so now I'll wind this out here. I'll stop the lathe. And you can see that we haven't yet cleaned up all the way around. There's a part there that's not machined. So what we're gonna do is go in another 20 thousandths and take another pass. Okay. So now without touching the cross light hand wheel, uh, we know two very important things. First, we know the surface is round and concentric. And second, we know exactly where this surface is because now I can look at my hand wheel and whatever number is there, it doesn't actually matter. I know I can go in 20 thousandths from that number and know that the surface will get 20 thousandths smaller. This is the first time that we can actually say that. Now we can start thinking about hitting our dimensions. So we took that initial measurement, which in this case was 969. And let's say our drawing calls for this diameter to be 900. So we've got 69 to come off of there. Now you don't want to do that all at once because you might overshoot it. And uh, overshooting is the cardinal sin in machining. You only get one shot at that. So what you want to do is often what machinists call sneaking up on the dimension. You break it up into passes that are smaller as you get closer and closer to the dimension. And especially when starting out, I recommend checking your dimension after every single pass, uh, just to make sure that the amount that came off is the amount that you think should have come off. And uh, by doing that, you'll catch all the little mistakes that you're gonna make, you know, misreading the hand wheel and, you know, maybe you forgot to take out backlash one time. So make all those little mistakes as you go along. And by taking smaller passes as you get closer, you'll eliminate those errors. So in this case with 69 to go, I might take two passes of 30 thou and then a final pass of nine thousandths. That is turning in a nutshell. Hitting dimensions takes practice, so don't be discouraged. Just grab some scrap and start spinning it and uh, practice. So I hope you found this useful. Please do subscribe both uh, here on YouTube and on Patreon. There are links in the description for all of that. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.